So today's video is um, checking run out on a mill spindle, particularly a mini mill, but I had somebody question uh, my capabilities and my alignment on my mill spindle, and they wanted photographs to prove that it was adequate, so I um, figured I'd do a video and we'll discuss um, how to check run out on your spindle, collets, chuck, whatever. So, here's the basic setup. And obviously you got the magnetic holder. I put two gauges on here just so you can see. Uh, I am a little bit off zero, but... I was just playing with it, so... As always, when you're using these dial test indicators, you want to kind of keep a, I don't know what you'd call it, not necessarily a parallelism, but you want to keep your your indicator arm as parallel to your part as possible. Um, you know, if it was to come straight in, well, if I had it straight in off one side, on this side, it'd be fine, but since I'm running it off the side, you know, I want it like this with the part. It's called a um, cosine error and you can actually get quite a diff bit different readings if you don't have it um, as close to parallel to the part as possible. Um, obviously that's not a magnetic holder but I just use some regular block magnets to keep it in place. Um, you know, they're both reasonably sturdy. So once you have your setup mounted, I'm just going to reach up here and rotate my spindle with the nut. And all I have in here is a standard call it a 3 8 inch reamer. This reamer is pretty straight so hopefully this camera is picking it up pretty well. It's not my usual high def but as you see I'm rotating it around. You can see my my little uh, spindle rock and well it's pretty close to alignment. Uh, We'll get a close-up of each of these. Hopefully, once again, hopefully this camera is focusing in on this. And that's a um, indicator that's to five ten thousandths. This one's just to a thousandths. So, as you can see, at my spindle with a regular, what they call precision collet, which I think is allowed to have like six thousandths of an inch run out in this set, then obviously it's pretty square. So you increase my mill up, you might wonder what that noise is. I've actually just put a counterbalance set up on it. And I have this line, this line's marked at three and a half, so I'm just going to go with that. And once again, I'm just rotating my spindle nut by hand. I'm back up so you can see the spindle turning. And there is a little bit of play there. I mean, that's three and a half inches down on that reamer, so you're going to expect something, and let's see, you know, so on my thousandths indicator, I'm running just over a thousandths to run out at three and a half inches, you know, on the five ten thousandths, it's tag in, there's the far end, so we'll see one, two, three, and not, not quite to the third, it went over a little bit on the first, so once again, that's about the same as the other one. Obviously they're both working in unison. So that is how you test run out on a spindle for the most part. I mean you can also measure up inside and do all kinds of other things. I find this to be a fairly quick, fairly accurate reading. Now I have to actually switch over tooling. So I'm going to set the camera over here. Hopefully I can get an angle so you guys can see there's no funny business going on here. Maybe I'll use my V block here to see if it'll work out for me. And it wants to be stubborn, so let me rig up another camera setup real quick. All right, you guys should be able to see that. I will be quick about this. Another thing I always do when I take this nut off, usually I don't tighten it more than what I can do by hand, but I just use the wrench 
instead of having a separate hammer because it doesn't take that hard of a hit usually unless you like really crank it in there and if it takes that hard of a hit you probably shouldn't be um, probably shouldn't be putting it in that hard anyway I mean usually when I when I tighten it up I just hold on to my quill let my cutting bit sit and then hit it with the wrench and give it just a fast quick jerk and it's usually sufficient as you see I'm just making sure there's no crap on this and this is what's in question but this company I'm not going to say any names at the moment because I actually like the company and they have some pretty good tooling and they're usually pretty good to work it with me but I don't like the fact that they have to question my abilities and my intelligence by making me do photographic evidence of what I consider claws. So this is a little bit bigger than the call it. I don't think I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to do something different here guys. Well I'm just gonna scratch this indicator. You guys have already seen both indicators obviously work similarly. I'm gonna use the same reamer. I mean if you can see that there's no burrs or anything on here. There's a few scratches but it's not gonna make a significant difference. So I'm just gonna sink that in, snug it up, get this set back up. Oh, almost forgot I gotta give myself some more room here. that snug back up. I'll bring the camera over here so you guys can watch me slide this into position. And I'm just going to aim for that zero because seems like a good place to start. Alright, well, it's a little off the zero. I'm not going to be too picky about it, obviously. Same reamer, close to the same setup. Once again, I'm going to turn the nut by hand. Okay, so there's obviously significant play out in this chuck. Uh, Y'all have just seen it's not my mill, at least not with a collet. But let's uh, keep true to the fashion. And we will run up to the three and a half inch mark because we don't have much more with this and this reamer is actually sunk all the way into this so and it's it's about the same run out I didn't wasn't paying attention to see if uh... let's see if it yeah so obviously we've lost five thousandths of an inch there Well, it's, yeah, it's about five thousandths of an inch off. And let me just, you know, try to set you guys down over here again. I'm hoping you're seeing all this. I'm using a, one of my toothbrushes to, as a prop for the camera. So I'm just going to reset this reamer in a different position. How can I do this without dropping everything? Well, here I got an idea. I'll stuff a little... Oh, I'm not damaging my tool. Use a little piece of toilet paper there. All right, so the reamer dropped. Give it a spin. If it ends up in the same position, all the way in, then I'm going to be surprised. Anybody's guess where it landed? Could be the same position. Likely chance is about a thousand to one. So once again, rotate by hand. And obviously. That's obviously not the same position since we're getting more run out than we were before. We'll run back up to this line and do it again. And the run out is still there. I wasn't expecting anything different. And it's actually showing on this one we have, well, we're at uh, four there and three there. So that's seven thousandths of an inch run out. 
and this check's supposed to be uh, 24 thousandths at the most, so I'm um, going to have to say that this check is insufficient for the claims. Um, they said something about using a half inch test bar. Um, my opinion is if it's got that run out with a half inch test bar, then it's only good for. Uh, well, a half inch test bar for that accuracy, so um, if you can't run a 3 8 inch drill chuck with that kind of accuracy, then it's not that accurate, it's not the accuracy of a chuck that they that I believed it was. So, um, that's how you test um, indicator run out on a mill. Um, I made a video previously that discussed column alignment you can actually use the indicator on the side and see if your columns out by that by running up and down turning running up and down turning running up and down turning and you can do so uh, to see if it's kicked out or into the column as well so I hope you guys enjoyed this it was a short one I still have to get together that finished part of tramming which I will do and I will see you all soon thanks bye